Hey, what's up guys? Tony here from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com and we're handling a question here from David, a Learn Auto Body VIP member. And he says, Hey Tony, this is David. I have a few questions. So I'm repainting my Camaro that still has good original paint, but I need some technical advice. Number one, I've block sanded or scuffed the car down with 400 grit, but the scratches seem pretty intense yet. Pretty intense yet. So should I go over it with a finer grit? Or will those scratches disappear once the surfacer sealer is in? The, qu the, the answer is yes. Um, I always recommend to finish sanding with 400 to 600 grit paper for painting. Okay, any kind of painting, base coat, clear coat, single stage 400 could be a little too fine. You could actually finish off with like a 380 uh, with single stage paints because the paint is a lot thicker. But you shouldn't be worried about painting base coat over 400 grit because as you use your 400 grit and you're sanding over and over, it actually wears down and it becomes a 500 to 600 grit. That's why um, I believe, and also John Kosmoski, the founder of House of Color, who's been painting for like 50 years, also agrees with me uh, that 400 grit is the perfect grit to paint over because it'll give you that tooth the scratches enough for your base coat to stick on you know what I mean because you don't want to be painting over a finer grit because it'll it could blow off you know I mean that's an extreme example but you know if you're painting over 2000 grit if you have a little chip somewhere the paint will blow off if you get enough air under it right there's just it's just too smooth enough for the paint to stick <clears throat> okay um so I'm not sure if you're planning to put um, primer sealer over the 400 grit, but that actually could be too fine. Like if you're going to put primer uh, filler sealer over, um, I would even finish off with a 320 grit, then put your 2K filler primer over it if you're looking to, to, to prime the whole car first. Then you would wash that down with a 400 grit um, before your base coat clear coat, okay? Uh, your number two is I'm using all House of Color products, including their DTs, <clears throat> foundation, surfacer, sealer, which I can mix as high medium surfacer or as a sealer, but I almost don't have the time to prime the whole car and sand down. So can I just spot prime the bare metal spots and spray the sealer and continue with base coat? Uh, the answer is yes. I'm also spraying candy cobalt blue for base. P.S. My email won't let me send more than this at a time. So we can just go over to the next spot. Three, I have two uh, Atom X27 spray guns, high volume, low pressure, and low volume, low pressure. I've tried both on a test panel, but which one works best for each individual step? My test panel ended up with some tiger striping and had runs. Was not e was easy, way easy. Not sure if it was because they didn't have a mix ratio, but I checked on the website and online, and some people said it's two one one. So I did that. Also sprayed seventy two degrees with medium reducers. Uh, so let's tackle number three, question number three. So uh, the high volume, low pressure spray gun is recommended for base coats, okay? Um, although you can spray both base coat and clear coat with a high volume, low pressure gun, okay? You can do that. It will work and you won't have any issues. I've done that for many years. Uh, but if you wanna get technical, the high volume, low pressure is great for laying on your base coats. And then the uh, low volume, low pressure is good for clear coats, okay? Um, and you can use both a 1.3 or 1.4 tip size on each base coat and clear coat. It's all up to you. I like to stick with a 1.4 on all of my painting, okay? Um, as far as the runs and tiger striping, I'm pretty much going to guarantee or assume that it's just the way you're spraying. Maybe you're spraying, your flow is a little too slow and you're laying on too much paint will give you runs and tiger striping is incorrect pattern overlay. So it's good that you practice on it. Make sure to set up your spray guns like I mentioned. You wanna be spraying uh, base coat with around 27 to 28 PSI, and then your clear coat, 28 to 29 PSI, uh, trigger pulled, okay? Um, <clears throat> 72 degrees is okay, medium reducer, okay. Um, number four, my critical question. I have a compressor in the basement, which is the same temperature as the garage, 72 degrees, but I have my line running underground 20 feet to the garage with three water filters at the garage where I connect my hose. But my question is approximately 15, it's approximately 15 to 20 degrees outside. So when I spray, 
Will that cause problems in the paint since air controlling the spray gun is colder in that area? I'm painting the car. Paint outside. So when I spray, will that cause problems in the paint since the air controlling the spray gun is colder than the area I'm painting the car in? Thanks for any advice. I'll be grateful for. So yes, I would definitely keep the your hose at the same temperature if possible or in the same vicinity. You know, 20 degrees colder, you're gonna get condensation. If it's cold, you got cold air coming into a warm area, you're gonna get condensation. So yes, it's gonna be important for your, um, yes, it's gonna be, sorry, I got a dog in back of me. Yes, it's gonna be important to keep everything as the same temperature as possible, especially your hose line because you're going to end up with condensation. So if you have your air filters, that's going to probably help you out a lot. And don't forget to have your final insurance air filter um, at the bottom of your spray gun. Okay, so uh, let me see if I have something to show you here. Um, I don't have it with me now, but as you see, I have a low volume, low pressure atom spray gun here. But at the bottom here, you're going to have your air filter, okay, coming in at the bottom, okay? That's pretty much how you're going to want it. Well, you're going to have your gauge here, okay, your regulator, and then your air filter, that red air filter on the bottom here. That'll basically take out the remaining or rest of the water if there's any going through your spray gun. All right, so let's take a look at your car quick. <clears throat> here is the, uh, what is this, a Camaro? Looks like you're uh, pretty much taking a lot of it apart. It looks like you have your fenders off. You got your radiator support exposed. Um, and it's looking good. It's looking really good. I like it a lot. So um, if you're going to be doing, I don't know, you mentioned candy color. So if you're going to be spraying this thing a candy, you want to make sure it's one color before you start spraying um, you, you know, your base coat and clear coat. So get it to at least prime the whole thing one color and then you're good. If you're going to be putting a dark color over this base coat, you I would just prime. Um, let's see if I can get a squiggly pen in here for you guys. I would actually prime all your bare metal spots, okay, all these areas uh, with your 2K primer. Okay, and get it gray and then you can feather it and uh, you can feather it with 400 grit, get it ready for paint, and then you could put base coat right over this. So you could actually spray base coat over your black body panels here um, that are just scuffed, okay? You don't have to go priming the whole car. Um, as long as your base coat is laid on evenly, your candy coat can go on top of it with no problem, okay? You just wanna make sure you don't have like dark spots. So if you're painting like, a light color over this, you know, dark colors would be no problem. A red would even be no problem. But if you're painting like a light uh, silver or like, a, you know, a light blue or light green, you're going to want to be careful because these areas, like say you prime this, right? Prime these areas. You scuffed it down. Everything's ready for paint, but you have primer patches here. And you put like light blue base coat on this, right? these areas, you're going to want to make sure it's covered and even and matching the rest of the car before you do any, before you do your clear coat or before you do your candy. So, I mean, it's easy to avoid. Just make sure that before you put your clear coat or candy on, it looks even, you know, use the lighting in your garage, use a light and just make sure you're covered. If you're not, you can always just spray a little extra in those areas. All right, so hopefully this helps. Let me know, comment down below. If anybody else has any comments or questions, type them down below on the YouTube description here. And um, if you guys are new to watching this, subscribe, um, share with somebody who might uh, enjoy this video. And also don't forget, if you haven't yet, uh, click the top right over here. You can grab a free 85 page auto body manual at learnautobodyandpaint.com. Just click that if you're on mobile or down below if you are uh, on a desktop computer there and that's pretty much it. It's Tony here from learnautobodyandpaint.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you soon.